Welcome, everybody. Today, I want to build with you all a little blockchain game. We are going to try to build this within the hour, or at least I'm going to give you all the kind of concepts to build in less than an hour, and you will be able to take that and build any game that you can possibly imagine uh, using any blockchain you like. Let me jump into I build this. First thing I did is I jump into my terminal here and the one thing that is the stunning point for anything with ThirdWeb is to use the ThirdWeb CLI. Now, to invoke this ThirdWeb CLI, I don't need to download anything or set up anything. I just need to run npx ThirdWeb and if I just run this, it will tell me what I can do with their web. So here we have a nice size art, love that. And we can see there's a, a bunch of options. The one that uh, I always start with is create. So let's run that, npx the web create. Create will walk me through step-by-step -step instructions to create either an app, like a front-end app, or a smart contract. When I start a blockchain project like this, like a blockchain game, I usually start with the contract because that's going to be kind of the kind of my back end, if you will. Uh, it's going to be my engine. So I choose contract and let's call it um, workshop demo here. And the next thing he asked me is to choose a smart contract framework. So hard hat or forge is the two options we have right now and we're about to add more. Uh, I like Forge personally. Um, it's nice and quick. It's a bit uh, faster than Hardhat, but Hardhat has a bit more uh, kind of plugins and support. So they're both good options. Let's go with Forge. And now this is the interesting part. Um, the CLI asked me if I want to start from one of ThirdWeb's base contracts. And this accelerates my development quite a bit because I don't have to write everything from scratch. I can start with something that already works and just customize it. So for my game, we had three NFTs, the three cat levels, right? Kitten, Grumpy Cat, and Ninja Cat. People can claim multiple kittens and can have multiple Grumpy Cats. There's multiple copies of each in the world. That is the definition of a ERC-1155 NFT. The difference between ERC721 and 1155, they're both NFTs, but ERC721 are unique NFTs. Each NFT is unique. They cannot be additional copies of it. Whereas 1155, you can kind of print multiple editions of the same NFT. So that's what I want to do with my cats because I want in circulation, multiple kittens, multiple grumpy cats. So 1155 is going to be my choice. Now, I can choose a bare bones 11.55 contract and start from there. Or I can choose one that has a little bit more functionality like Lazy Mint or Delayed Reveal or a full on drop contract. Uh, and if you're familiar with uh, the third web contracts, uh, this is stuff that we uh, provide in our pre-built contracts. But now you can create your own contract that starts from that and customize it to your needs. For this, I actually chose 1155 plus Lazy Mint. Um, Lazy Mint is what I'm gonna use to create my cats initially. I want to like prepare them for other people to start uh, claiming, but I don't want to mint them for myself or because I'm just a game creator. I just wanna like prep them out so that other people can claim and play with them. So Lazy Mint is, is meant exactly for that. So I'm gonna choose this base. And so this is gonna create my uh, my project. So let's have a look at that one right here. So now I have uh, empty forge, like a standard forge project with my contract here, which extends the base that I chose to extend uh, in the CLI. So now I'm ready to go. This is by the way, all ready to build and deploy. So here I can do, if I wanted to deploy this right away, I can go ahead and run yarn deploy and this will deploy it to the blockchain. We actually actually want to customize this a little bit, right? So that uh, I get my game behavior that I want. 
So there's two things that uh, I've customized uh, on top of adding a couple of functions. The first thing that I thought was interesting is to customize the, the transfer and burn behavior. How would I go and change the behavior of this contract to do something else when I burn uh, an NFT? So the great thing is that because again, I start from a base, I can just come and click on here and start looking how this base is constructed. And so I see a bunch of things like getting the URI and here there's like interesting things like, okay, this is how I claim an NFT. So let's an address claim multiple lazy minted NFTs at once, uh, one or more, right? So there's a claim function and then there's a verify claim here says add your claim verification logic by overriding this function, okay? So there is an empty function here that we can override to control who can claim and what rules should be for the claiming. <clears throat> and then we see, oh, there's a burn function here. Let's an owner uh, burn NFTs to the given token ID. So here it just does a regular burn thing. I can go ahead and, and customize this completely, right? So I could go, Okay, let's take this function, go back to my contract, and let's change the name of this. It's gonna be uh, my cat attack contract. Like that. And then, so in the constructor, we don't care too much about what we're gonna do. We wanna override the burn. Burn should do something different for us. So we're gonna change this virtual into override. So we say we override in this function. And now we get to do whatever we want in here. In my game, what I wanted to do is when you burn the grumpy kitten, you get the ninja cat. Uh, for this demo, we, what we can do is say, actually, when you're gonna burn your kitten, you're gonna get a grumpy cat. Just for to, to do the, the small loop of show you how, how this whole like iteration loop looks like. To burn the NFT, all I need to do is call burn, basically. I can call either the super.burn, uh, with the same parameters, we just uh, calls the function that was uh, underneath. Yeah, I can just copy what, exactly what this is doing here and changing a little bit so that we overwrite completely. Uh, so I don't actually care about these checks here, the proof caller. I guess we can do the same. So let's take it all in and just copy paste it here. And we're just gonna change the behavior of like, Okay, once you burn your kitten, we're gonna do something extra, right? So we can do, if the token ID is zero, which is gonna be the, the, the token uh, for the kitten. Okay, so if you burn successfully and the, the burn token was zero, then uh, I, can, I can mint you another token. So here, uh, it actually, Copilot to complete pretty much everything for me here. So we can say here is going to mint. So let's look at mint. Mint is the two address, the ID that I want to mint, how many, and then additional data. So mint to the owner that called burn. The ID is going to be one. So if you burn token zero, I'm going to give you token ID one. And now I'm going to give you only one of them. And then that's it. That's that's the uh, way to like customize the behavior of the base contract. Just take one function, slap in an override, and now you can do whatever you want inside of it. Uh, let's change a couple of things here. We don't want royalty, a royalty recipient. We don't care about that. But the, the base requires it. So here we can just say it's going to be whoever calls this. So message the sender and the royalty amount is going to be zero. We can leave name and symbol because that way people, like when you deploy, we can customize that. And that's it, let's try um, let's try deploying that straight up and kind of play with this. So when I run yarn deploy in a project created with the CLI, it's actually gonna run uh, NPX the web deploy for me. So you can do it both ways. You can use the, the scripts here with Yarn, or you can just run npx or deploy, and that will work in any pr uh, other projects. Um, so here it's gonna run the CLI. You found that it's type foundry, and then you found my contract, my Catadac contract. It's gonna do um, uploads and upload for all the relevant 
metadata and compilation data that we're going to need to deploy this contract. And then what's cool with this is that it's going to open up my browser to continue the deployment there so that I can use like my MetaMask wallet or my Coinbase wallet directly from my browser to do the deploy. And this is super important because if you've deployed any smart contract before, you know that you have usually have to deal with local scripts that you have to write. And that requires usually exporting your private key and putting it in a file just so that uh, you can run the script uh, on behalf of your wallet. And that's super dangerous because leaving your private keys on a local file is generally a bad idea. And so with this, I don't even need to extract my private key and put it in a file anywhere because it's gonna do everything through the browser. But once the CLI ends uploading, you get a URL that uh, opens up automatically or you can click on it and it looks like this. So this is actually taking the contract that I just wrote uh, in front of you and letting me deploy it on the blockchain. So let's give it a name, uh, cat attack. And this is gonna be just my test one. So I'm just gonna test uh, CAT, cat, cat attack test, perfect. Um, and then I can choose to add it to my dashboard. I can choose which uh, chain I wanna deploy to. Uh, so let's do Arbitrum because it's nice and fast. So the first uh, transaction is to deploy and the second transaction is to add to my dashboard. So let's do both. And here I have now the contract explorer and my, my generated dashboard for the contract I just wrote, including my customized burn function that we just wrote together, right? So this burn function here is what's gonna get executed when I call burn uh, on the contract explorer. Now, uh, there's no events yet because I, I, I just deployed it. So it's just the default stuff. And then there's no NFTs there yet because I haven't, I just deployed it once again. The dashboard gives you a lot of convenience here. So because we detected it as NFTs, I have this handy like, hey, you want to add NFTs to your contract? Like we know how to do this because we recognize which type of contract. So here I can do, okay, batch upload, select some files, um, document, this is my cat drop, right? So I have a little folder prepared with three images and a JSON file that points to my images. So this now I can do from the UI or I can do it from code too, but the UI is so convenient here. So it's gonna upload my NFTs to IPFS and then it's gonna call my contract to lazy mint those NFTs, okay? So already like we've interacted with the contract that we just wrote and we didn't have to put out any private keys or any environment variables or anything like that. We just did npx throw away deploy or yarn deploy if you use one of our contract templates, uh, project templates, and you get to your page and you can start interacting with it. Now we're gonna test real quick the behavior that we just wrote. So we said, hey, if I burn a uh, kitten, so I took an ID zero, which is again, token ID is here. So if I burn a, t a kitten, I will mint a token ID one, which is a grumpy cat. Okay. So right now you can see all the supplies are at zero because I lazy minted those NFTs, right? And so if I go to the Explorer and let's say I want to claim one for myself, I can actually do it from there. I can also do it from code, but just to try it out real quick. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here I'm going to copy my wallet address here for my receiver. So token ID is going to be zero and I just want to mint one. And then I'm going to execute it right here. So this is going to call claim. So it's going to give me one uh, kitten. Here's the successful transaction. And now if I go to the NFTs, it will show me that there's one supply claimed for NFTs. Now if I click on it, I get actions to do on it. And again, this is all possible because my contract implements a standard that the dashboard and the third web SDK understands. And so we're able to provide all this convenience UI and APIs. So here it recognized that I own this kitten, so I'm able to transfer it, airdrop it or burn it. So let's try to burn it, which should call the default burn function and execute our custom code. Now let's see if the demo gods are with me today. So let's burn one. 
Okay, gonna confirm the transaction. Burn successful. And now you can see that there's zero supply for token ID zero, but there's one for a grumpy cat, token ID one. So it worked. I burned my token, so it destroyed it. And it executed my custom logic here to mint something uh, as I burned it, okay? So that's on the smart contract side, how I was able to customize all the transfer actions, burn actions, etc. How did I build this app now? That is my custom front end that talks to my contracts. Once again, I went to my terminal and I did npx the web create. And this time I didn't choose contract, I chose app. Now it's gonna tell me, okay, which type of framework do you wanna use? I chose next because uh, um, that's the one I, I'm used to, uh, but you're free to use the one that you prefer. And then it asks you if you want JavaScript or TypeScript. I usually go with TypeScript, but again, it's preference. And then it's gonna create a project. And here I have it open already actually, uh, it's this one. So this is what it creates for me. Preset next project that uh, is ready to go. The, the empty setup is you get the third web provider all set up, so you have to think about it. And the one thing you, you do need to modify in the app, the TSX, is which chain ID we're gonna work with, so which blockchain we're uh, gonna interact with. By default, it's mainnet, and so if you're testing on stuff, it's probably not gonna be mainnet. Uh, you have uh, all the uh, chain IDs that you that we support, and we're gonna work with Arbitrum Testnet because that's where I deploy my contract, right? So I just set that up and kind of forget about it. Now in the index, uh, by default, the only thing we get is a connect wallet button. So let's have a look at what that looks like. I'll just do yarn dev or next, that's the the default thing to launch the the, the site. And now I can open it up uh, in this tab right here. And by default, all I get is this pretty nice looking connect button. So by default, it looks like this. I can connect with MetaMask on this wallet, Wallet Connect. This works on mobile, on desktop. So I click MetaMask and boom, I'm connected. I can switch networks. I can switch accounts, etc. So this is already my connect wallet functionality all set up for me, all ready to go. And all it required is this little line right here, uh, connect wallet. Now, obviously the thing that we really want to do is talk to our custom smart contract, right? The one that we just deployed. So for that, the thing that we're gonna need is the address of the smart contract. So address is right here in my dashboard. I can just click on that to copy it and uh, go back to my code. And the way to uh, grab an instance of my smart contract in my front end is using our React SDK that has a lot of uh, handy hooks for me. So the syntax looks like this. And the hook is called use contracts. Use contract, that's all you have to remember. And here it wants the address of the contract. I'm just gonna paste it in from my dashboard. And that's it. This is all I need to do to get a hold of my contract that is deployed on the chain that I've um, specified in here, this active chain ID. So now I just pass this address, it's gonna look for my contract on that chain and now have uh, access to it. And so from here, I can do all sorts of interesting things with it and I can use all of the handy hooks from it. So for example, if I wanted to just say display all the NFTs in that contract, I could use the use NFTs hook and use NFTs just requires passing the contract and this returns um, a, a object called data. So all of the hooks that read something return something called data. And you can see that it's a array of NFTs. So let we can rename it, we can call it NFTs like that. And now I can say, hey, actually, you know what? Let me put a divider here. And then we're gonna do, hey, NFTs, if they're there, map it and just show um, 
The best way to do this, to show NFTs, is to use, yet again, like RSDKS convenience for everything, a uh, third web NFT media, okay? So here uh, it wants uh, the key, so let's do that. It's NFT is not token ID, is it? It's metadata.id. And then for the NFT, it wants uh, that. So I think it should be happy now. And this should be a string. Okay, let's have a look at the website. Uh, if it's happy, I'm gonna connect my wallet. Uh, yeah. So this is not, it's actually not full NFT. I need to pass it the metadata here. And is this even right? It's that. Copilot sometimes is too too eager and you gotta correct it. Bad copilot, bad copilot. Okay, so this is the the way I display a NFT with just a few lines of code. And here are my NFTs. I didn't need to connect my wallet for this because it's just reading from my contract, right? Here it just, uh, the third web media, NFT media, it takes in your NFT metadata and handles all sorts of media types, images, videos, MP3s, 3D files, all of that. So it's a really handy way to display your NFTs. And then here, you know, excuse my, my HTML skills, probably need to do a div here. And then, so now it's there, uh, one on top of each other. And if, if I wanted to display like the name with it, I would do, uh, so NFT, NFT dot metadata dot name. All right. Um, and I think I need missing key. Yeah, I need to put the key at the very top here. Okay. So now I have my NFT image with the name of it, image, name of it, image, name of it, right? So that's how I, now I can read stuff from my contracts using the hooks. And it only took like this amount of code to now display all the NFTs in my contract. I could switch it up and say, hey, actually I wanna show only owned NFTs, which is what I actually use in the final demo. And if I use own NFTs, it wants the contracts and obviously who should own it. So the owner wallet address. And the way to get that is just to do another hook, use address. So now if I do use address in anywhere in my app, I can get the connected address uh, right here. So now if I switch to own NFTs, and now I do need to connect my wallet so I can get the address. Now it shows me the one I owned, the grumpy cat, okay? So this is how I read data. Now, the interesting thing here is doing transactions on the contract. And for that, we have an amazing component that uh, we, really, we really, really like. I think everybody really likes it. Um, and I'm gonna put it up here actually. And it's called the Web3 button. The Web3 button is a little button component that allows you to do actions on any contract and is super, super easy to use. So let's make a button for claiming a kitten, okay? Claim a kitten. So what would that look like? And here, let me see if this, uh, yeah, missing attributes, add missing attributes. So here it wants two things. It wants the contract address, which we have up here, and we can make this into a const so it, it doesn't, uh, we don't repeat that. And then it wants an action. So an action is actually just a function that passes me my contract. So I just pass the address and the action gives me back the contract. And then from the contract, I can do all sorts of actions. So here, um, if I want to do a custom, completely custom uh, call on my contract, I can use contract.call. And here I just need to pass the function name and the arguments. Now, how do I find these? Go back to my dashboard, go back to the Explorer, and these are all the functions I can call, right? So here's the claim function, and here are all the parameters that um, I would need. By the way, you can also jump into the code tab here 
and look for all the read functions here and it shows you some nice capabilities here. Let's switch to JavaScript and writing data, I'm interested in claim. So here actually it gives me the exact uh, syntax that I should be uh, using here. So let me do this. And then receiver is gonna be who? Myself or the connected address, right? With the use address. Token ID is going to be zero to claim a kitten, right? Token ID zero is kitten. And quantity, just one, okay? And that's it. That's that's my Web3 button. When I click on it, I want to execute this action on my contract. Okay, let's have a look at the my code. So it looks like this, okay? What's really cool with Web3 button, if I'm not connected, it actually becomes a connect wallet button. So I wouldn't even need this connect wallet button in my app. I could just use Web3 button and just do one action and this will handle everything. This will handle, by the way, network switching and all this stuff. So once I'm connected and I'm on the right chain, it will show me the action that I'm supposed to do. So if I click claim a kitten, now it's going to handle all the way, open the MetaMask, call the right action on it that I said in my, my action function, confirm, and boom, here's my kitten. I just claimed it and my used own NFT is refreshed automatically. It's all hooked up together. Now you can see how the whole stack comes together of super quickly building a contract, super quickly deploying it, managing it, uploading NFTs to it, exploring, looking at all the events, etc. Super quickly building a front end with it which using the hooks and using the Web3 action button, which is honestly phenomenal. Uh, I use this for everything. So this was claim the kitten. We can do another quick one for burn if we wanted to. Uh, let's call this burn. And now uh, for burn, uh, for burn, we can do it differently. We can use one of the pre-built um, functions that we provide that are way more high level. So our contract is at ERC 1155, which means I should have access to all the ERC 1155 functions here. And let's see what I get. I can do things like get the balance and all that, but uh, what I want is actually do an action. So here's the burn function right here. It's also claiming, there's also all sorts of other things. Lazy Mint is here, okay. And um, this will kind of detect if your contract supports this type of action and execute it for you. If it doesn't execute for you, it will give you a nice error message that tells you how to unlock this API for your contract. So here I'm interested in just the burn, right? And now it's like a nice high level API. It tells me okay, token ID should be the first parameter. So I, I want to burn my kitten, right? Token ID uh, zero and burn quantity one. Right, and so now I get another uh, thing. And by the way, let's make this a little different. Uh, we can pass accent color red because burn is kind of a destructive action, right? So we can switch like that. You can make this dark mode, light mode, accent color. So there's a bunch of customization you can do. And uh, let me try to call burn. So again, now it's gonna call a different action on my contracts and this should now burn my, my kitten and now I have two grumpy cats. So I don't show actually how many I have here, but um, that's another thing I could easily do using another hook, use balance. This will give me how many I have and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how I kind of build this entire um, UI here using action but, uh, web three buttons, uh, using use owned NFTs here to automatically show what I own. And uh, then the last thing that I haven't shown here is the game events. And that once again is another hook, which we call uh, use, uh, uh, I think it's all, all contract events. So if I do use con all, con all contract events, it's the same, uh, same syntax here. And I just pass in my contract. And this will give me all of the events that happen on my contract. And the very cool thing is that this will give me the past events by default, but there are options that I can pass. If I pass subscribe true, 
Now I get all the past events, plus in real time, all the new events that are happening in my contracts. So again, a lot of functionality packed in these hooks on my React SDK. So I'm gonna stop here because I'm almost at, we're almost at time, but that's basically the stack. So to, recruit, to reiterate, npx the web create gives you the choice. Do you want to create a contract over app? Usually start with contract, choose a base, customize it, then npx the web deploy to deploy it. Now you get a dashboard, you can interact with it, you can copy the address. Then npx the web create app, create a quick front end with it, do use contract or any of the hooks to read data from it and use the Web3 button to call things on it. And that's how in less than a few hours, you can build any Web3 app that you can possibly imagine. That is the magic of the web. And we absolutely love this flow and uh, everybody that tries it loves it. So give it a try and I promise you, you will never go back to anything else. It is such a joy to use.